You must have heard already that the first typhoon for this year, 2020, has been named Ambo. After the news came out, I started receiving text messages that some people should be getting ready because the storm has been named after the Bishop of Caloocan. Some were asking me by text not to be too violent or devastating. So I posted something on Facebook to remind people not to always associate typhoons with destruction. You know, this coming typhoon should in fact be welcomed as a blessing because Metro Manila's water supply is already in a very critical level. If it is not replenished, that will be another additional crisis. Well, of course, I am aware that people who have been texting me were joking. They know full well I have no control over a typhoon that just happens to be named Ambo. But imagine what it must be like if people took it for real. Imagine what it was like for Paul and Barnabas to be treated like idols or Greek gods. Well, St. Luke tells us that St. Barnabas was called Zeus and, and Paul was called Hermes. In our first reading, Luke tells us that while Paul and Barnabas were on a visit in this uh, Lycaonian city of Lystra, a man who was crippled from birth was able to walk again after Paul commanded him to stand up. And the people were so amazed that they proclaimed the two of them as gods who had come down on earth in human form. Gods in human form. And they even started to worship them and offer sacrifices to them. You know, I like the way the two apostles reacted. Luke tells us that Paul went down. It's a graphic way of saying he refused to be put on a pedestal to be worshipped. The two of them went down and mingled with the people and even tore their garments, well, probably to show them that they were real human beings that they were ordinary mortals with flesh and blood who just experienced the power of invoking the name of Jesus. Well, Paul says, he confronts them. He says, why are you doing this? We are human beings with weaknesses, the same weaknesses that you have. And we are now telling you to turn away from useless things. Turn to the living God. In short, what Paul was really telling them was, I am just a medium. I am just a messenger. Please pay attention, not to me, but to the message. Well, Paul is trying to explain to them that he's calling attention not to himself, but to the living God, to the goodness of the living God. He says, and listen to this, because it's very relevant to all of us. It is God who is giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons. It is God who is providing you with food and filling your hearts with gladness. Very timely, no? But in the end, in spite of the speech of Paul, well, it's useless. They don't listen. The people just get fixated on the medium or on the messenger himself and not on the message. They treat him and Barnabas like idols and offer sacrifice to worship them. I hope you don't mistake the things that I'm going to say now. But sometimes... Honestly, I imagine our canonized saints in the Catholic Church 
probably wanting to talk like Paul and Barnabas to some of our fellow Catholics who behave like the Lycaonian people did. Maybe sometimes even our beloved patron saint, San Roque, the patron of the victims of plagues, is getting pressured by his devotees. I imagine him wanting to say something like this, Hey guys, please don't forget, I'm just a human being with the same weaknesses like you. The words of Paul. I just tried to follow Jesus, our common Lord and Master. Thank you for the honor of uh, calling me saints, a saint. But please, don't turn us into gods. We're not. We can only pray for you and invoke with you the name of Jesus. There. I have said it as directly as it needs to be said. And it is said by a bishop. For the sake of some of our fellow Catholics, or for the sake of some of our fellow Christians from other traditions even, some of whom think that we Catholics have turned into idol worshippers, which is not true. With all due respect, sometimes we really need to be reminded of this. Especially when we exaggerate our veneration of the saints and martyrs and forget that there is nothing that we venerate in these holy men and women except Christ, except the Christ whom they have reflected vividly through their exemplary, their saintly and heroic lives. Well, good reminder when we dance to our patron saints and try to obtain favors from them. They might do what Paul and Barnabas did in our first reading. They would jump down from their pedestals and call attention to no one else but the one God who has made himself known to the world through our one Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, whatever the apostles, saints, and martyrs said and did, they always did it or said it in the name of Jesus, who acted powerfully through them. Just as he continues to act silently but powerfully through us, through you and me, through the members of his body, the church. There is power in us only because we are parts of Christ. Even Jesus refused to be simply reduced to an idol. Do you remember what he did when people wanted to turn him into a king, when they idolized him? He ran away. Do you remember how the demons who were speaking in the body of a possessed man proclaimed him, Oh, Jesus, Son of God, Most High. And what did Jesus say to him? Shut up. Do you remember when Jesus healed the possessed man from the Gerasene region and the man wanted to stay with Jesus? Maybe to idolize him too. But Jesus told him, No, 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 go back home instead and tell your family what God in His mercy what God has done for you. He didn't even say, tell them what Jesus did for you. He said, tell them what God in His mercy has done for you. In the gospel today, there is another Judas, not Iscariot, Judas Tadeus. He asks an important question. He says, how come you make yourself clearly known to us, but not to the world? You know, it's obvious to me now, how come? Why? Because he did not want us to reduce him to an idol. He calls attention only to the kingdom of God. You see, 
It wasn't Jesus who proclaimed himself as Christ and Son of God. It was the Christian community. He proclaimed only the kingdom of God. But he taught us to call God our Father. You see, the problem is worship does not always change people. Do you remember what is written in Psalm 51? The psalmist says, For in sacrifice you take no delight. Burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice is a contrite spirit. A heart humbled and contrite you will not spurn. And in another passage from Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, the prophet says, It is mercy I desire, not sacrifice. Oh, my dear friends, could it be that God allowed our places of worship to be closed temporarily so that we can sincerely ask ourselves if we have not tended to turn our churches again into temples for idol worship or mere places of sacrifice? Could we have missed the point about Christ who offers the unique sacrifice the unique priesthood, where the priest and the victim, the offerer and the offering, are one. He doesn't say, I will offer a sacrifice for you. No, no, he says, I will give my life for you. He is the priest, he is the sacrifice. Could we have forgotten the mercy that God desires? Perhaps, this is an opportunity to return to the simple thing that Jesus is asking of us in the gospel. He said, if you love me, you will keep my word. And my Father will love you. And we will come to you and make our dwelling with you. And we will send you the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we have heard it said many, many times by many people already that we cannot just go back to normal after this pandemic crisis as if we just woke up from a bad dream. It cannot just be more of the same after what we all have been through. I know, admittedly, all other dioceses have been busy trying to define what they call a new normal for all of us after this pandemic. But you know, honestly, something within me tells me that the new normal that we try to plan again is not going to be normal. That maybe, maybe, we should submit it first to serious prayer and a discernment process.